From 2021, the president and others may no longer be allowed to engage in foreign medical trips, says chairman of Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs. And 35 state governors pledged to help rebuild Lagos. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeinde. Welcome, this is Plots Politics and uh, Fix the State House Clinic to enable President Muhammadu Buhari orders stop foreign medical treats from next year. The Senate tells the State House as the Permanent Secretary of the State House Abuja Tijani Umar appeared before the Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs to defend the 2021 budget estimate of the seat of government. Now, 19.7 billion naira was voted for the State House in the 2021 budget, out of which 1.3 billion naira is for the upgrade of the State House Clinic, if approved by the Senate and by extension the National Assembly. To discuss this, we have um, we have um, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, who I understand will join us anytime soon. And we also have Chukuma Ephraim, who is a political analyst, joining us from Enugu. Good evening, Chukuma. Good evening, Chukuma. Can you hear me? Yeah, good evening. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, very clear. Uh, let me start with you, and later on, we'll be joined by other uh, guests to join in this conversation. Now, we understand that this has been a recurring decimal. This call has always been there. But this looks like a very serious statement coming from the committee, uh, not the Senate committee, saying that what is the essence uh, of approving this budget when the first family usually get their health care attention outside the country. I mean, it's uh, quite uh, ironical and uh, the least expected uh, that we used, even at the slightest um, uh, instance of any health challenge, uh, the president or any member of the family uh, quickly jilts out of the country in search of uh, health care. I think uh, the last time it was reported that just for the need of a massage, uh, the first lady uh, left the country. And then on one of those cases also, when she was uh, reporting about the deplorable state, where she even mentioned about the possibility of uh, some common analgesics being present at the state house clinic. So he did review to Nigerians how deplorable the first hospital public hospital in Nigeria is. And come to think about it, that the money that is earmarked annually for the reparation, for the rebuilding, the advancement and the positioning of the state house clinic to ensure that it meets up with the best facilities globally in terms of healthcare. Because of course you are talking about the healthcare that is available the number one citizen of the country. And if it is not good enough, one would imagine what's the state of the other hospital that is meant for the ordinary citizens would be like. And come to think about it, there is a budget right in there for the state house clinic. What about when you now talk about the all other hospitals in Nigeria, which the budget is not even up to, what is a mark for the state house? then one would wonder whether we actually have the nation in the mind to actually create the content, have the value that should be able to serve our interest as a nation. Because I mean, it's an indictment to us as a country. If the president of the country cannot find amongst all the healthcare professionals, amongst all the touted facilities and investments that is made in the first hospital and the facilities are not good enough the professionals are not good enough to provide health care services. It's a mockery on the Nigerian state and should not happen. Okay. I mean, we can't do that for military, like talking about exposing your intelligence, your weakness as a nation. So why should we do that when it has to do with the health 
of the number one citizen of the country. Okay. It is indeed a mockery of our democracy. Chukuma, I, I will come back to you. Uh, let me quickly bring in uh, Femi into this conversation. Femi, I, I know that this is not a new topic, but what is quite instructive is that the Senate is saying, what is the essence of you know, approving this budget when the president or the first family hardly received medical attention? Enough it, it, here, sir. I think we should start from the point of asking ourselves and also asking the National Assembly about how well previous budget to this, you know, Asso Rock Clinic, presidential travels, and of course the health sector as a whole have been utilized. The truth is that because over the time we have refused to ask questions, you see the presidency, you see press status, you see ministries coming to the National Assembly every year, you know, plagiarizing previous budget and repeating previous budget you know, for approval before the National Assembly. We should not just be concerned about the fact that the National Assembly is questioning the rationale for this demand in the 2021 appropriation bill. But we should also be concerned about the fact that year in, year out, up to 2020, a lot of millions of our common wealth have been budgeted for this same purpose. And we should ask ourselves, if in 2020, 2019, National Assembly budgeted funds, you know, for Aso Rock Clinic and President Wari and his family has to travel overseas for healthcare. We have to approach the Aso Rock Clinic according to the wife of the president that has the paracetamol and we keep, you know, running the country in this direction. It's very unfortunate. So I think beyond the fact that National Assembly is raising this very fundamental question. We need to have all previous allocations to this sector have been utilized. It is very important. This country is under the heavy body of death. As I talk to you, our country is approaching the country. You may want to call it whatever you call it, as a uneconomically you know, viable as Brazil, because we want to borrow borrow. But are we not, when are we going to start asking ourselves about how our previous allocations have been spent? It is very sad that we have allocated so much to the answer of music. We have allocated so much to the health sector. But the president and his family, who are who promised to lead by example, keep patronized foreign health care institutions. Okay. For their Femi, Femi, so thank you. Your, your point, you have raised quite a lot of uh, important issues that we are going to stay on. But let's quickly take a short break. We'll be back in a while to continue from where you stopped. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back. In case you just joined us, this is Plots Politics. And we are looking at uh, what the Senate committee has hinted that what is the essence of approving a budget of the Asura Clinic when the first family usually get their medical attention abroad? Hence, they are calling for the budget not to be approved. And we have with us uh, Okenwa, who is, who is speaking with us all the way from Henugu. And we also have Femi Lawson, who had to stop by to join us via phone on this conversation. Now, let me quickly get... Uh, okay, let me also add that we, host, we are being joined now in our live studio. We have Biodun Shoumi, a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Biodun Shoumi. Good evening. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah, good to have you. We've a long time. We've been speaking Absolutely. virtually. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just uh, continue with uh, Kenwa to uh, look at what Femi said. Now, he's saying that this is not just about this year's budget. What about what has been happening in previous years? Remember... The first lady, you alluded to how she raised that flag, that this is quite a preposterous part of my language. So how do we go into the past to ensure that somebody is punished for the money that was budgeted and not probably executed? 
Yeah, citizenship uh, engagement is advised, and of course, uh, the need to also initiate a legal action. I know, like, uh, over the time in this nation, we have like well many citizens raising up issues, like when set up did in 2017, about 300 billion that we all accounted for. And then up till now, three years down the line, nothing has been done about that. And just recently, uh, that concern also was reviewed about three months ago on the need for Nigerians to revisit that. So I think all relevant stakeholders, media inclusive, uh, legal luminaries, women and citizens, we need to begin to initiate conversations around this. And of course, since we have our representatives and um, the legislators are the hallmark of democracy, people should be able to like hold the legislators to account. Like say, if you are there, we need you to you know, weigh in on matters like this, you understand? We need to like come up with conversation on how to hold our leaders responsible for the previous misdeeds. Because the simple truth is that by the time you estimate the amount of money so far, have gone unaccounted for and uninvested or just recklessly spent, and you know that should that have been invested either in education or in health, you know, the critical uh, indices for the human development in the nation would have been far better okay. than what it is, you know, today. But today, Nigeria has been all time low when you talk about human development indices, and it is not good enough for the future of this particular nation. Okay. Let, let me bring in Biodu show me whether he has a different perspective to this conversation. Um, some would say that this is just political gimmicks. This is just a political statement that things hardly happen. Would you imagine the Senate taking the bull by the own to say that, Mr. President, they attended to back here. There would not be any budget if you need to travel. It's going to be from your own pocket. I'm giving it that interpretation. Could that be what they are up to? Um, well, if you look at it, um, I'm looking at the fact that they're talking about Asoro Clinic. In the first instance, it shows the level and the quality of people we have in National Assembly, both the um, House of Reps and Senate. Is the issue about the president trip, over treatment illnesses that can be treated here? or that cannot be treated here. Mm. Is the issue about having a clinic in Asorok? The issue should be having one hospital or different hospitals in the whole country where the president can move in at any point in time and get the same treatment like any other Nigerian. Um, I'm sorry, I'm coming from a UK background. As far as I know, there is no special clinic for members of parliament or the prime minister. The Prime Minister of UK will either use the King's College Hospital or St. George's or whichever. That's true. And those are the same hospitals where my children are born. Then you begin to ask yourself, so what is the matter with us? Why do you need to have a clinic inside us? After all, it's a clinic. It's not a full-fledged hospital. So those who have been budgeting billions for Asoro Clinic in the first instance are wrong because we cannot run away from that. They should know that that's a first aid first response hmm. clinic before you evacuate the person to the hospital. Hmm. What we should have is a national hospital in Abuja, which we have, that should be able to treat all illnesses. And in every single state, all hospitals should be built to the same standard. Now, for you to know that they know what they're talking about, these legislators, these um, senators are not telling us about the disparity you know, in the facilities available in military institutions compared to civilian. I have been to quite a number of them, not because I went for treatment to check friends who were lucky to get it far to them. They're called reference hospitals, military response, reference hospitals. You will think you are either in Accra Regional Hospital or you are in St. George's Hospital in UK. Hmm. The standard is not that we don't know what is right. We know, these facilities are in this, in this same country and there are empty beds in those facilities, military hospitals. So how come all the general hospitals are so jam-packed, the rapidated facilities building, lack of proper medical care, lack of equipment, and we have them in some hospitals in this country. So it's not that we don't know what we are doing. Hmm. Even those senators <coughs> and House of Rep members are actually not taking the bull by the arm. It's not about Asorok. The president can be in Kano, he can be in Lagos. I pray not. If he takes ill, 
Are you going to rush him to Aso Rock Clinic in Abuja when we know that he needs immediate treatment? So we should have same standard hospitals all across the, the country. country. It's not about the president, it's one of us. We are the one that elected him to be there. It should be about having the same facilities for all of us. So the way the I am not comfortable with the way they are going about it. It should be about let us evaluate the state of our hospitals. It does not matter. If you call it a clinic, that's different. If you call it Federal Medical Center or General Hospitals or National Hospitals, we are expecting certain standards. Well, where we don't have certain facilities and there are specialist facilities, at least we must have designated hospitals where those facilities can be okay. provided. Okay, Mr. Biodo, show me. Uh, uh, let me quickly take this one from, from, uh, from Femi so that I can uh, release him to continue his journey. Femi, uh, you can hear what uh, Biodo show me has uh, thrown up again, yeah. and that yeah. has to do with, let's not even give thumbs up for the legislators. It is about some kind of looking at the foundational issue of attending to our public health institutions. Yes. I know we might have issues with the kind of gov government is talking about. Nigerians, Nigeria will remind us that this is more of a capitalist government, not the one he has painted. How realistic is this and how possible is this? You see, it, it is very realizable. Yeah, very realistic. And it is practicable. Can you please speak up? Then it's very practicable, very realistic. If we are truly determined as a people to get our situation elevated above personal and you know individual interests, today we spend so much of our time, of our you know resources addressing the concern of individuals rather than our institutions. And also begin to elevate our institutions and more above individuals until we begin to understand that our constitution is bigger than our president or whosoever. Then we may have to come through this route again in the next budget cycle, next the cycle of discussion or whatever. What is important is that as Nigerians, we must understand that certain things are not working and we must be ready to set them down. It is very shameful that the first family of Nigeria would have to report, you know, to enter healthcare outside the country. At the point in time, it became so ridiculous that the presidential spokesman had to tell us that our president went overseas to treat at the hair infection. These are things that your children, my, ch my children, a lot of us encounter like on a monthly basis. We visit pharmacies, our local you know, clinics, and we get this cut. It is because the Asura Clinic, National Hospital, and the primary health institutions around our authorities have been paralyzed and they are no longer working. So to start with, we must go back to our immediate consensus and get these institutions to work before we can begin to be taken serious as a country. It is very sad, but we have to do this. Okay. Thank you so much, Femi Lawson. Uh, I release you to continue the journey, but you can continue uh, with the program um, on your device, but make sure that you are not watching your device while you're driving. <laughs> Thank you. Let me quickly get Okewa's uh, final comment on this topic before I come back to Biodu to round it off. Okewa, what do you expect to happen? Now you have the platform, you have the voice. What will you say concerning this issue, the way forward? Uh, let the Senate not play politics with this. And by that I mean, it is already well intended and well marshaled out that the right way to go is that the president and the family should quit anything medical tourism. Let's look inward, let's develop the facilities, let's uh, 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 build the capacity in terms of the, 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 the health professionals. Let's like whatever thing we've seen outside that we we, we, we desire for our nation, we should be able to replicate that. So since the Senate has come up with this, I mean, the Senate uh, uh, 
I come with the chairman on the health issues. There should be that political way to ensure that this goes the right way. And not maybe like somewhere along the line, uh, we begin to play politics about it. And before you know, the whole thing is swept out, uh, uh, under the carpet. I do not expect to hear anything less of implementation. Thank you so much. Uh, Beyond Beyond show me, uh, we saw a whole lot of things that is possible in Nigeria. <laughs> I wanted to say thanks to COVID-19 pandemic, where we saw our VIPs being treated here, where we saw attention being given to our healthcare uh, uh, services. So basically, that gives us an, a hint that I think it's more of a mindset. I think it's more of wastage. It is more of what does it take us to get treated abroad? How do we have confidence, build confidence in our uh, health sector? Yeah, well, I think a lot of it is about lack of accountability in our health service um, care delivery. delivery. Um, I know this um, because I'm a bit competent to talk on it. I led the chaired learning um, of the UK to um, Republic of Ireland and Germany um, when I was in UK, um, even though I was not a psychiatrist or anything, on the hospital reprovision services under Tony Blair. Yeah, what you see going on, it's um, the fact that we do not have accountability in that sector. In terms of, you know, pinning down issues to standards, you know, there are different standards that you need to set for yourself and you aspire to meet in terms of primary care delivery, in terms of secondary care delivery, and in terms of tertiary care delivery. Even in terms of mortuary, there are certain standards that you must have. What we have in Nigeria is that for a long time, we have neglected the accountability aspect in public services. Many people pay lip service to the health sector. Doctors will go on strike, cry over one thing or the other, and nobody will listen. What we do is we increase their pay. Once you clean the doctor's pay, you do not provide the services they need to know, work and with. the equipment they need to work with. What are you doing? You are just wasting public wealth, and that is the major thing. Doctors are never happy looking at patients dying because they do not have the equipment or the drugs, but you are paying them you know, to watch. And that is one of the major grouse of the Nigerian doctors. Many people have never paid attention to it. Same thing is happening in the educational sector, but I don't want to focus on that. But when you look at what do we need to do, we all know what we need to do. Olikoye Ransom Kuchi was a minister for health in Nigeria. He came out with a fantastic primary health agenda. How far have we implemented it? Till today, we've all pushed it to the background. We do not have any efficient primary health care, not until COVID-19, that we had the only governor, as far as I can remember or know, is Lagos. You know, the Gulf State government started talking about how to devolve services to the primary level, you know, to take care of people, not even out of general care, but out of the fact that facilities are already stretched. How do you manage these people? So we need to look at how uh, legislators are responding to the needs of people and their health care needs. We are not doing that. We need to look at how services are being provide, uh, provided, including the health care providers. How are they meeting the needs of the people? And then looking at the budget, how do you ensure that budget meets the need of the people and benchmark them to certain standards? These are all what we need to do and ensure that we monitor them. Thank you so much, uh, Biodu Show Me. But the thank you is just for this particular segment. We we'll still have you with us, and we we'll also have a camera with us to continue the conversation. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at what the governor of Kaduna State had said to Lagos State Governor that the 35 governors, that's from other states, have pledged to support Lagos in rebuilding Lagos aftermath of the ANSAS uh, 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 protest, which was later hijacked by some hoodlums. That is all for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.